But I think um, <clears throat> in Meg Thee Stallion in the shooting situation, mm -hmm. I think people were saying that she was starting the argument that she was hitting him, um, stuff like that. And? Like, I don't... What the fuck that mean? That's... Yeah, that. <laughs> but in in her, in her IG live, she said she they the everybody in the car was arguing, and then she got out because she was tired of arguing. She walked away. So for me, I'm like, well, if somebody's walking away, right? Yeah, that means you're removing yourself from the situation. Like you're not <laughs> continuing to escalate that situation. So I'm actually totally cool with that behavior. So what's the yeah? Why, yeah. why are we even? Why are we? Why are we either gonna? You're gonna go after me? That's some Zimmerman shit. What, what the fuck are you doing? You gonna go after me after I've walked away? Mm -hmm. Like, you was in a negative space. I'm out. I'm removing myself <laughs> from that negative space and you gonna bring that shit to me? Yeah. And then not only just bring it to me, but like, as violently as shooting me? Right. Like. So yeah, I don't, <laughs> there's no excuse for that. Mm -mm. I would like to hear his bullshit reasoning so I could try to like, dissect why the fuck he's messed up in his head for healing purposes. And I'm not going to lie. There's some part of me that is entertained by seeing the minds of, <laughs> of people who are a little bit, you know, <laughs> off in some ways. Um, because trauma is, and that's why I think this is like a, such a big story. It's like trauma is drama and that shit sells, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And it's good to talk about it. And we're talking about it too, but I think the difference is we want to address these things in a way where it's not just gossip and talking mm -hmm. and you actually learn like the lessons behind mm -hmm. some of these things, like talking about DV and mm -hmm. talking about all these other things mm -hmm. where you get to the root of these issues. Because yeah, there shouldn't be too many Tories out there and there should be people that, men out there that are examples of being the opposite of what Tory is and what he did. Like, yeah. there's no excuse for that. Mm -hmm. And the men that are making excuses for that are putting themselves in the boxes of Tories. I'm sorry, you are. <laughs> I'm not sorry, actually, you are. You just are. <laughs> and it's let me know who to unfriend. Because, nah. There's nothing, there's literally nothing that he could say. <laughs> I, I, I thought, I've tried, I've tried. I really have, like, what in the fuck could you have done? Like, See, what yeah, was it? The only thing that... Nothing, it, it, nothing. it would really have really to... Don't. Like, okay, I understand guns as a use of self-defense. However, I'm going to need you to know how to throw hands prior to getting to that point. Yeah. So that way you can defend yourself without killing someone. And the only reason, in my opinion, that you should be that concerned is if they have a gun. Right. Or some other sort of weapon that you can't really handle, you know? Like, everybody should be having self-defense classes. Mm -hmm. Like, depending on a gun is some... Pussy ass. See, I'm, I'm not trying to use pussy as a uh, meaning weak... That's true. Uh, ...mentality anymore because the pussy is strong, okay? And... What Trevor Noah say? And great. A human being comes out of it and then it continues to function... <laughs> as it did prior what the hell <laughs> that was funny all right but uh you talking about um how this is a deeper conversation mm -hmm. i i think segues into our next question let's do it uh for two sides of the same coin um should i ask the question first or should you flip first um i don't know you can ask the question have you ever experienced domestic violence in your life? Mm, okay. Heads or tails? Heads. Heads. You got it. Oh, okay. All right. So we one for one? Yeah. One for one. Okay. Um, so when we came up with this question, I honestly instantly thought about my parents. Mm. Uh, my parents got divorced in 2016. And as of 2010, I was sure that they needed a divorce. Um, but I saw it go, I saw it more so going downhill in high school 
but there were signs my entire childhood that I am now more aware of. Um, and it was a good thing. Uh, my mom is happier. I hope my dad is happy. Should do another episode about having to enforce those boundaries. Mm. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so divorce was a good thing. But that's, like we had to call the cops several times, mm. you know, with my parents and stuff. And it wasn't always physical. Sometimes it was, it was a lot. Like I don't know how much I want to put out there, you know. But I mean, it's up to you, you know. Ain't no pressure. Yeah. Um, it's not a deep dive or nothing. And yeah, just, yeah. With podcast, plus you know, it's all on you. Yeah. So it was just they needed to be divorced. Um, mm. so that's who I first thought about with domestic violence. And, I, uh, oh, in the deep dive, I go over the power and control wheel where I'm talking about different types of, uh, domestic violence. And it's again, not always physical. Um, and it's power and control wheel. Cause there's a lot of mental and emotional manipulation. Yeah. Um, so check out the deep dive on Patreon again, uh, to further understand what I'm talking about when I say I, I, when I was going over that. I, I saw that in my parents, um, but it wasn't always what people think about when they think of domestic violence. Mm. Um, and my dad wasn't always the perpetrator. And I think that is another conversation as well, as far as how women are perpetrators of domestic violence. Women can be. Yeah, and, sure. And there are examples of that. And it could be both parties, too. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, in my own personal romantic relationships, mm -hmm. um, there was a time when I was drunk and I was going through shit anyway. So, there is, it's a long explanation that I don't really feel like, get, like getting into. Um... But it was like the tension was building in me mm -hmm. and my ex at the time wasn't listening. And again, I was drunk. Oh, man. And uh, it's a dangerous combination. Yeah, I hit him. And once my my hand hit his face, I realized in that moment, one, I sobered the fuck up <laughs> mm -hmm. and I saw the change in his eyes. And I was like, th that's what instantly sobered me up because, yeah, it was like, one, shouldn't have done that. Two, I don't know how he's going to respond. Mm. You know, like, the love that we had was not in his eyes when his eyes changed. So, yeah, that, that was scary, honestly, because I didn't, I didn't know how he was going to respond. Mm. Um... Luckily, he didn't respond with violence. He shut the fuck down, which I get. Um, and I quickly, like, again, I sobered up. So I was it, the the bad thing about it was like we weren't alone. Like it was a kickback at our house or at my house. Um, yeah. So like it was instant silence, right? Um, so yeah, I, I you know. And then I was like, I was pissed at the, like, the tension was building. So I was pissed building up to it. But as soon as it happened, like, what anger could I have? Like, I knew I was in the wrong. Like, I knew I shouldn't have done that, right? Mm -hmm. So all my anger went out the window. But because I had built that up, I was like, well, now I can't just, like, totally. So I was saying kind of what I was thinking. Um, but I, and. I apologize, but that wasn't like and he left. He left my house that night, which he should have. Space. Um, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. So Shit. I don't even know if we full like I don't recall fully talking about that afterwards. Yeah, I talk about it. Damn. We thing. probably didn't honestly, but. I think I knew not to do that shit again, and it wasn't okay to do it in the first place. Like a lot of people talk about. It was just that one time, or it was just those two times. Like, mm. any time shouldn't have happened. Right. 